let's talk about what the you is that you think you are. The thing that you've identified as you, there's a false you in here. The false you is the one that thinks that there's anything that can add to your life or take away from your life. Okay. The essence of what you are. I get that if someone is uh, broke, they need money. Don't entangle these points. Don't get caught in that. Kyle, some people need more. I hear that a lot, but you're missing the entire point. That makes more of what you are, right? That, that your value is more. There's something that makes my value more. In other words, like a spouse would make me more than I already am right? And a divorce would make me less than I already am. That is a false you. You can still have those things, but don't be tricked by there's anything that can add to you, the true self that you are. And there's anything that can take away from the true self you are, right? When you start to understand that, you start to realize that there's a thing in here that you call you that has your name that is a separate energy than anything else. And this thing is just one of two things, trauma or a character you created to cover up trauma. That's it. The thing I call Kyle. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a story. In junior high, I was bullied by kids. Guess what I did to stop them? I became funny and I put me down with them. I jumped ahead of them, right? I jumped ahead of them and joined them in putting me down. So it both protected me and it made them laugh. And I switched from being bullied to popular, right? So then guess what happened? A comedian is born. Right? All of a sudden I'm doing comedy clubs and this sense of self-love, all the stuff, but under it without even knowing it is a kid that's horrified that he's going to be bullied again. And if that image isn't kept up at everyone's a fan in the audience thinking that I'm amazing, then guess what? I'm going to be bullied. That's in the body, right? So I'm glad that that was the solution. And it, yes, it created amazing careers. But now there's an image that's being protected out of the terror of the body going I'm going to be bullied again. So what do you have that with, right? And so I go on these long walks and I'm starting to be there for the little kid that's scared he's going to get bullied again or yelled at or hit or anything else, right? So what was Kyle? Well, Kyle that gets a lot of views, Kyle that gets a lot of followers, Kyle that's a great speaker or a comedian or whatever else, right? is getting more, oh, the number's high. Okay, so guess what? Your hopes are, your hopes are anything that will keep the trauma buried. So if you have a deep-rooted fear of alone, a person that you think will never leave you is your hopes. But it's not truly your hopes. It's trauma's not seen hopes, right? Your fears are anything that would expose the trauma right? So if I'm not caught in, look how great my image is, then the fear is going, oh my God, there might be bullying happening. There might be all kinds of other stuff. So your deepest fear was is the death of what you think you are, but it's a separate self. But it would also be the death of the trauma that your body has been holding on to, because when you were a child, you could not handle what you were going through. This poor five-year-old you could not handle what you were going through. So you created a false you that you call your name. And that you is what's dissolving right now. So the more you get present for it, the more you spend those times alone, the more you say no to dinners, the more you start to hear God, you hear what's in here and you start to see that you're being threatened by you in someone else's clothes and they're triggering everything you're scared to experience. And then when the body actually goes through the full experience of what it's scared of and sees that it's not being bullied, meaning like if, if I don't get a bunch of views or hear that I'm good enough or whatever else, then I go through the, oh my God, am I being bullied? And I just sit there and be present and the energy experiences, it's not bullied. Then it cries the trauma out and is freed, right? So that is the story of Kyle with 
a lot removed from it. But the truth is once that's gone, which it's slowly dissolving because my number one goal is not, I heard, I heard of, I was actually at the gym today and I was just like, I think I'll listen to a motivational tape. And the first thing I heard the guy say is, I want people to remember me forever. That's great. If that's what you want, that is not my goal. My intention is to know what I truly am and do whatever I can to gently more and more learn and know what I truly am, right? I was cool. That's great That if that's what he wants. But the more you do this work, the more you start to have a different type of intention, right? So if my number one intention is to know what I truly am, the most expansive thing I can do right now is alone time. Because in alone time, I'm not told I'm funny. In alone time, I'm not told I'm wanted. In alone time, I'm not told that I'm great. And what starts to get exposed in the now, the fear of being bullied does, right? The they're going to hurt me does, right? And then if I keep walking and I don't fill it with anything or show off to someone somewhere what I do or something like that, it starts to fall off. And that's that's why saying no to a dinner that doesn't call to you right? That's why that's trying to happen is it's going, I'm going to kill. <laughs> I'm going to kill what you think you are through love, right? And you can still be those things. You can still be fun. You can still be funny. You can still teach. But my number one intention on this planet right now for myself is to know what I am. And life goes, okay, we're going to do things that really make you go through what, experiencing what you are. We're going to put you through all kinds of different stuff to make you know what you truly are. And you're going to turn down things that, you know, seem like they would fit a different intention. But like, Instead, you're going to find who you are. That's what you want. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, you know, I, I know that I said that with an image or I grew up being slightly famous a lot and had, I was like a dork in high school and then booked 10 things I hate about you. And suddenly a ton of people loved me. And that was really weird. And then I got all this love for being in these teen movies and on Comedy Central. And suddenly, People that bullied me were like, we knew you'd make it and everything. And it was this, this crazy thing that also this is this seemingly positive thing. But you probably do that with other stuff, right? It's not just only being a speaker. It's just like who you're dating and wh what you want in a relationship and what you, all these things, you know, that's trying to fall off of you. That's trying so hard to fall off of you. And the universe is shedding our images and our false selves. That's why it feels so dark is because everything that we covered up that we don't want to experience is coming to light. So we're all literally going through trauma constantly now, right? We're feeling this trauma and this other thing and like this crazy stuff. And we're then crying it out and then noticing it's there less, or we're hiding from it and running from it. And, and we can't, we can't do it anymore. You can get more drunk or whatever, but if you're here, you're doing some work, right? And then you're learning the true essence of what you are. And that's freedom. And freedom is what the soul wants to do. Freedom is the truth. Freedom is your essence. You're already free. The ego wants to win. The small you, the separate self wants to win. The character wants to win against someone else or to be understood by someone else because you believe they're not you. You get heard by the now.